Here's a familiar scenario for travellers on metro systems around the world. A busker gets into your carriage with a guitar or a violin and a small set of speakers taped to a trolley on wheels. Now, depending on your mood and the musical talent on display, you might clap and dig into your pockets, perhaps, or look away and pretend nothing was happening. But if you were taking line one of the metro in Brussels at the weekend you'll have had a very different musical experience. The French pianist Franck Bralet, the artistic director of the Royal Chamber Orchestra of Wallonia, sat behind a full-size upright piano and gave the first known recital on an underground train. I asked him how it came about. We played a concert uh, at the end of last year and I met the, the chairman of the, the STEEB. STEEB is the, the public transportation society, the subway and tram and buses in, in Brussels. There was this big anniversary of the STEEB uh, 60s year. He told me, OK, well, why not making music and, and having an orchestra coming in the, in the subway? And I said, of course, this is a great idea. So uh, we, we can do it. And so we met before the summer checking the subway station where we were about to, to do this concert. And at that time, he told me, but what do you think about playing in a train? Uh, and I, I thought it was, it was a great idea, but I said, OK, but with an orchestra, this is not possible to play in a train. I said, no, no, not orchestra, just you, a piano. We put a piano in the train. And uh, so you begin at the, the, the very beginning of the line, and you go to the terminus, to the last station, and play music. And I said, OK, uh, Bonco, we, we, we do it. This, this, is, uh, this is so fun. And uh, so they did a great, great job because they, they, they customized a, a, a train. I mean, four days to, uh, to do some decoration and a new paintings on the train and to install the, the, the piano and to, uh, of course, to, uh, to have it really uh, fixed, uh, an upright piano. And uh, um, also the chair, also the chair, because I had to be quite stable. This, it, it, actually, it was like being in a, in a boat sometimes and, and moving and having to really to stay fixed to my piano. And what time of the day were you playing? Was it presumably not the rush was, hour um, or was it the rush hour? No, um, it was a Saturday morning. It was not so crowded. But actually, at the beginning, the first station of the line, uh, there were mostly uh, people uh, very fond of music and people wanted to, to see me and to hear me in the, in the metro. Like, like uh, I don't know, 20 and 30 people. It was, but a, free, after it was that, a free concert. Yeah, yeah, of course. But after that, there were some people that they, they didn't hear about what was happening and they just got in the metro for one, two stations, five stations. And they were very surprised, of course, of what was happening. What sort of experience was it like for you? Because certain people who play... I don't know, the violin, other in instruments like that, which are very portable, they can just wander around and, and play wherever they want. But as a, as a pianist, you, you, you have certain restrictions. Did it feel liberating? Yeah, of course, because it's it's a very uh, like a child dream I had. Uh, I was very jealous when I when I saw uh, you know a, a guy playing the the guitar on the beach or playing the harmonica and uh, be able to to travel with instrument and to play everywhere in the nature in a city uh, somewhere in a house and uh, in a garden. And so um, I always dreamed about uh, uh, having this possibility to move my piano and to play elsewhere. But uh, actually, I never imagined that uh, it could happen. What about the repertoire? Did you choose it specifically for the um, the acoustics and the and the ambiance of being in an underground railway? I didn't want to do to play um, only uh, very famous tunes or just uh, easy listening music. I really want because it was like a trip, you know, thirty minutes through the, the city, going through Brussels, and I wanted it like like a small trip uh, through uh, music history. <laughs> So I began with a bar prelude. I played some uh, the, the finale of a Moonlight, a Beethoven sonata. I played the Schumann a Dream, a Träumerei of Schumann. I played the Chopin prelude. I played also some Gershwin and Joplin music. But I wanted to have a wide range of repertoire. Uh, of course, uh, short pieces, uh, sometimes pieces that people are have in the ear. You know, even people who are not very fond of music that they, they know they've heard the piece, but not only uh, easy pieces. Do you think you'll repeat it or maybe having done this, there are, there are other places that have previously been off limits that perhaps you'd like to play in? 
we say in French, faire l'école buissonnière. L'école buissonnière is when you are, you're supposed to go to school and you, you don't go to school. Pa you, you play, go, you play uh, truant. Yeah, and so I, I like it when we can uh, get outside of the, the, the concert halls uh, and uh, and play in strange places. Two months ago, we played in a zoo in, in a big volière. It was a big place for birds, and we played uh, among the birds. They were really uh, flying around us. So I, I like it because it's a way to touch the different public, maybe people who are a bit shy to come to, to concert halls and will uh, listen differently to, to music in these uh, occasions. Franck Braley there, the artistic director of the Royal Chamber Orchestra of Wallonia. All the music you heard in that interview was indeed recorded on the underground train in Brussels. So good it was. I'm sure you want to hear a little bit more, but uh, do stay with us here. Don't go overground. This is News Hour with me, James Kamarasamy.